Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I do not believe in uh, entities of pure evil or entities of pure goodness. Um, they are abstract notions, but I do not believe or think that a pure evil person exists or a pure goodness or good person exists. I don't believe in that one. That's first one. Uh, second one, do not, or I do not, believe or trust anybody else more than I trust myself. So why would I believe what other person says against my direct experience? If I know that snake is venomous because I witnessed that snake beating people and then the consequences was death, and you got some, I don't know, individuals telling us, school politicians or on the TV, that uh, that snake actually is not venomous, uh, why would I believe Gigi when my life tells me otherwise? And if Gigi tells me, actually, you should take that snake, uh, put it in your family, raise the snake's children, uh, put the snake in uh, your children's school, put the snake in politics, and so on, why would I want to do that? When I know, through direct experience, rubbing uh, elbows with those snakes, that uh, they're not good. So again, you can trust, I don't know why you would trust someone else instead of trusting yourself. Unless someone is an ignorant and when you're ignorant or you don't know anything, then yeah, you trust anything because you can't put it against what you know. You say, wait, wait a minute, is this true? Someone tells me this is a pair of, I don't know, a bicycle. If you never saw a bicycle in your life and you never saw a, a pair of glasses and says someone said, this is a bicycle, you don't, know, you don't even know what the bicycle is, and what the bicycle's purpose is, you're going to say, yeah, that's a bicycle. But hey, this was determined and agreed upon by consensus that these are glasses, but you don't know that. Therefore, you're going to go and speak with other people and say, hey, I want to get the bicycles. I know what I'm doing with the bicycles, but the bicycles, yeah, the bicycles are used for, they told me, oh, okay, to uh, see you clearer. So what happened here? We have an article uh, from New York, the New York Times, and we have an author that tells us uh, something that I don't think is true. I, by my personal assessment, and since I don't believe first that guy, and the second, I don't believe what he says, because what he says is a not even half-truth. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So this is the first encounter with this article, and it's a forever war. Putin has plans beyond Ukraine. So from the title, you see this, that this is a statement, a title, a headline, uh, an uh, affirmative uh, statement. And there's no doubt about it. It's not like um, maybe a could, should, might. No, 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 no. A forever war, a forever war. End of story. Putin has plans beyond Ukraine. Statement, clear statement, affirmative. There's no doubt about it. Tells this guy. <laughs> and Vladimir Putin wants to lead Russians into a civilizational conflict with the West far larger than Ukraine. Well, the civilization conflict is because uh, we have garbage here, you're saying? No, I already looked through the article, just so you know, you can read it. And uh, it's just using pathos, not logical argumentation and accuracy. He's not sincere. Oh, what was the author again? The author is Mr. Cohen. So that's another for me, um, Roger Cohen. I don't know, I have a little doubt about this guy. Putin's forever war, the New York Times, August 7. So Mr. Cohen uses not logical argumentation, he uses pathos, uh, uses your senses, your compassion. With compassion, uh, not really, uh, doesn't mean that it's logical. And he picks and chooses uh, events. Somehow, First, I don't defend these guys. These guys are big enough uh, or, no, to defend themselves. You can see it in uh, what's going on in uh, certain parts of the world. But I have some questions. Um, it's very strange that uh, we are supposed to believe Cohen that Putin wants a forever war and Putin wants uh, the, United, uh, the Soviet Union to be back together. He wants to... Mm, change our beautiful perverted uh, civilization or in the course of being perverted by these uh, guys and i think cohen is part of all this why through his little article here 
It's uh, but he's uh, he's not an idiot, but he is I think uh, a weasel. So Putin does this. Putin wants that, but you have, let's say, United States of America, which is, without any doubt, the strongest country on this planet, militarily and economically. It is. We can't deny that one. And it's very strange that if you read the U.S. mass media, the free media, the United States is. I would say always, and I don't like this kind of word, but I have to use it here, always um, threatened by, surprise, surprise, weaker countries. So United States always, I'm going to use this word very loosely, okay, that uh, United States is always attacked uh, around the globe and it has to react. And this is again, this is what these guys tell us we should think but you know from your life, from your experience, that the strongest guy in the school was not attacked by weaker guys. Were they? You knew the strongest guy physically in the school was beating people up. Was the, some of them were bullies and all that. Well, you don't have the weak guy going and challenging the strong guy always. As these guys try to portray United States of, uh, you know, occurring to it. Poor United States, the victim. And the United States always reacts to these weaker countries threatening and destroying and doing this. That's the first uh, scenario. And the second one is the United States is the force of good. Period. All right. And the United States intervenes everywhere on this planet because we voted for it to, in to intervene and defend again, the, the protect the poor and the victims doesn't have any interest. No, no, just love. That's all. There's another, another one that we have to accept, obviously. And then you have the United States as the common denominator wherever big wars occur or, you know, certain in military interventions. And they're always, again, loose word, uh, you know, uh, triggered by United States being threatened by, again, weaker countries. All this, all this worldview that is vomited on us it's a lie. It's a lie. Why? Because you know from a direct experience that the big guy is avoided by weaker guys. You know that somehow the bigger guy in the real world that can squash you and destroy you totally for years and years, for generations, is threatened by, I don't know, Yugoslavia somehow, um, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria. And the United States is always there to help, you know, and abides and don't, doesn't violate the international law. But it has uh, just brought, what, about 800 sailors and not Popeye the Sailor Man uh, military personnel with two vessels, military vessels in the Gulf uh, because Iran is a threat to its vessels and our Iran seized someone's vessels, which United States did the same thing. United States placed embargoes on Iran, not Iran on United States. I have to remind you that. But because we were threatened and because they were the bad dudes and we are the good dudes. Why? Because we say so. So again, we have to react. United States always reacts to other bad, pure evil countries, people, you know, we always, and you are the pure guys here, the pure good. That's the worldview these guys are trying to instill in us. Since, like this, from school, from media and the politicians, entertaining, entertaining, entertaining in the entertainment industry and so on. So I have to remind you that the United States has about 900 military troops in Syria. Syria, I have to remind you, is an independent sovereign country with its own government and its own problems. The United States, has about 900 troops on its territory illegally, supposedly fighting Syria's problems, solving Syria's problems, because that's what people do. When you don't like what happens in, or you perceive as something happening wrong in uh, the neighbor's uh, house, you go over there by yourself and you stay there. You take the best uh, bedroom over there and uh, bathroom and you stay over there and you solve their problem. And if they, uh, tell you to get out, you beat the guy and take his wife as well. So he has to keep his mouth shut. But he somehow cannot do that to you. You know why? Because he's bad and you're good. No, because you're strong and he's weak.
but somehow the weak challenges the strong. Again, this is the narrative these guys are spewing and we're supposed to believe. The same as this guy, Putin's forever war. All right, I don't subscribe that at all. I can see the common denominator in Ukraine. I see it in Iraq. I see it in Iran. I will, I will see it in the Balkans. I will see it in um, uh, Taiwan. I will see it in South Korea. I will see probably Japan, the whole thing over there. And it's all that just to defend. I don't know if I mentioned uh, Afghanistan, but nevertheless, Syria, Libya, on all these things, you have the same country and you will have the same country as a common denominator. You don't have Japan in Libya. You don't have Japan in, I don't know, in the Balkans. You don't have the Japan in, uh, in uh, Syria or Iraq. No, you have United States. Now, you don't have Bangladesh or whatever in all this. No, but you have only one country and it's coalition. Because uh, somehow, if you look in history in the last at least 30 years, the United States did not act alone, but it did not have a consensus. It acted with a few countries that intervened and uh, attacked weak countries. Why? Because the weak countries challenged somehow the big country. This is the narrative. Well, I don't subscribe to it and I think Cohen is a, a part of the problem. Why? Because he's just writing articles for the New York Times and trying to influence people that probably were not around the block at all, or maybe they're weak. Go and read his articles or article and make up your mind. Don't, don't, don't believe me. Don't trust me. I just try to raise uh, awareness a little bit of how these guys operate and what are actually we live in or what we, we are supposed to. Or they tell us what we live. Hey, it's all good when you feel it's bad. Thank you. And then you think, hey, it's a problem with me. If I think that, uh, you know, yeah, I should feel pleasure and I should, I feel pain. And this guy tell me, and you have all these weasels that are propagandized by those guys. And hey, everything is good. It's some problem with you. And you're like, no, don't know. Trust yourselves, my friends, not them. Uh, thank you very much for being with me again today. Or don't trust me. Obviously, <laughs> trust yourselves, go and get information, go, go and get knowledge, assess the situation and then come with your own conclusion and change your conclusion. If you, uh, in the meantime, find more information, nothing wrong with that is about finding the truth, not uh, being right in this uh, situation. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.